ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भागवत कंठ वन चैप्टर टेन टेक्स फॉर ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेद अंत स्वामी प्रभुपाद काम वर्ष पर्जन्य काम दुघामी शिषिचूस्म व्रजान गाव भयसो ट्रांसलेशन ज्यूरिंग द रेन ऑफ महाराज युद्धि The cloud showered all the water that people needed and the earth produced all the necessities of man in profusion due to its fatty milk bag and cheerful attitude the cow used to moisten the grazing ground with milk per pot the basic principle of economic development is centered about land and cows The necessities of human society are food grains, fruit, milk, minerals, clothing, wood, etc. One requires all these items to fulfill the material needs of the body. Certainly one does not require flesh and fish or iron tools and machinery. During the regime of Maharaja Yudhishthira, all over the world there were regulated rainfalls, rainfalls. Rainfalls are not in the control of the human being. The heavenly king Indra Deva is the controller of rains and he is the servant of the Lord. When the Lord is obeyed by the king and the people under the king's administration, there are regulated rains from the horizon and these rains are the causes of all varieties of production on the land. Regulated rains not only help ample production of grains and fruits, but when they combine with astronomical influences there is a ample production of valuable stones and pearls grains and vegetables can sumptuously feed a man and animals and a fatty cow delivers enough milk to supply a man sumptuously with vigor and vitality if there is enough milk enough grains enough fruit enough cotton enough silk and enough jewels then why do the people need cinemas houses of prostitution slaughter houses etc what is the need of an artificial luxurious life of cinema cars radio flesh and hotels has this civilization produced anything but quarreling individually and nationally has this civilization enhanced the cause of equality and fraternity by sending thousands of men into a hellish factory and the war fields at the whims of a particular man It is said here that the cows used to moisten the pasturing land with milk because their milk bags were fatty and the animals were joyful. Do they not require therefore proper protection for a joyful life by being fed with sufficient quantity of grass in the field? Why should men kill cows for their selfish purposes? Why should man not be satisfied with grains, fruits and milk which combined together can produce hundreds and thousands of palatable dishes? Why are there slaughterhouses all over the world to kill innocent animals? Maharaj Purikshit, grandson of Maharaj Yudhishthira, while touring his vast kingdom, saw a black man attempting to kill a cow. The king at once arrested the butcher and chastised him sufficiently. Should not a king or an executive head protect the lives of the poor animals who are unable to defend themselves? Is this humanity? Are not the animals of a country citizens also? Then why are they allowed to be butchered in organized slaughterhouses? Are these signs of equality and fraternity or non-violence? Therefore, in contrast with the modern advanced civilized form of government, an autocracy like Maharaja Yudhishthira's is by far superior to so-called democracy in which 
animals are killed and a man less than an animal is allowed to cast votes for another less than animal man. That's a Prabhupada classic. <laughs> a so-called democracy in which animals are killed and a man less than an animal is allowed to cast votes for another less than animal man. Shvavidvara harosh. What is that? Shvavidvara hushtra karai. We are all creatures of material nature. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the Lord himself is the seed-giving father and material nature is the mother of all living beings in all shapes. Thus, mother material nature has enough foodstuff both for animals and men. By the grace of the father, almighty Sri Krishna, the human being is the elder brother of all other living beings. He is endowed with intelligence more powerful than animals for realizing the course of nature and the indications of the Almighty Father. Human civilization should depend on the production of material nature without artificially attempting economic development to turn the world into a chaos of artificial greed and power only for the purpose of artificial luxuries and sense gratification. This is but the life of dogs and hogs. Everything in this purport from beginning to end is inconceivable to the minds of pretty much everyone outside the Krishna consciousness movement. Well, maybe Hindus might. No, I don't think even most of them would appreciate this because modern Hindus, outside of India, went outside of India for sense gratification, and those who are, well, economic development. And those within India have been much affected by the nonsense propagated by one person who is called a pundit, although he was a fool number one, who was the first prime minister of independent India, who didn't like the old culture at all and thought that, or didn't only think, but said that the temples of modern India will be the factories and the dams. So here Srila Prabhupada is referring to the hellish factories. And elsewhere in this first canto he wrote that a factory is another name for hell. So, uh, it's an absolutely different outlook on even material reality, what to speak of uh, actual reality. Material reality is not really real. It's, the, it's not the real thing. It's the falsely real thing. But even in terms of the falsely real thing, a completely different outlook on how to live life and uh, I, for those of you who are just coming yesterday as I did uh, this is not the verse that's in sequence for the devotees to speak on I just chose to speak on this as my arrival here due to some singularity or I often use that word because I think it's such a joke <laughs> that these Scientists talk about singular as a fancy term to say they don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. So, uh, due to some singularity or some singular serendipity, I happen to arrive when the farm conference is going on. So I chose to speak on this verse, which is a, is a verse that it's not in the act sequence of the, the devotees are in the tenth canto. Uh, Srila Prabhupada quite often quoted this as to how people should live in this world. How should they, how should they live? It goes against all uh, economic principles that are known to modern man. Economics being much inf interacting with ethics. The idea that the uh, economic system should be uh, constructed for the for the greatest happiness of all the people. But here, there's a completely different formula. 
Happy cows make happy people. Go and preach that in your political party. Make a political, make the cows happy party, happy cow party. People think a happy people party means to have a party eating people, uh, eating cows. They didn't come to eating people quite yet. It's, uh, it's on the way. So eating the cows, but round the, make the cows happy and then people will be happy. How is that possible? Well, because Krishna will be happy. And Yasmin Tushta Jagat Tushta. If Jagannath is happy, then the Jagat, the people of the world, will also be happy. So Jagannath, Krishna, he will never be happy if the cows are not happy. So there's all these plans for happiness by various economic systems, uh, various massive arrangements for sense gratification, but there's no possibility of people being happy, of society being happy, as long as the cows are not protected. So this is, this is advanced theology, actually. Advanced theology blends with uh, basic <coughs> human sciences, social sciences, On the level that human society is meant to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is supremely independent and in his independence he can do whatever he likes. What does he do? He likes to look after cows. Explain that logically? There's no logic. It's his personal liking. Just like many people like dogs and cats and ferrets is the number three pet in America. Number one is dogs, two is cats, and three is ferrets. And what to speak of budgerigars and so on and so on. Some people keep alligators, some people keep snakes as pets, and Krishna keeps cows. And not just pets, but uh, Srila Prabhupada often emphasized that cow protection is not just some kind of uh, pleasure that you get from stroking them. But economics, this is economics. Uh, even the butchers can be satisfied. Not that butchery which should be allowed, but those who want to eat meat, we can provide. We can provide for them also. We, uh, one of the propositions of the Krishna Conscious Movement is, let all the meat eaters eat beef. Right, and cheaper, because there's no need of slaughterhouses. You just take the dead cow. So practical that. All right, not everyone's going to be a pure devotee or maybe not even a devotee. But if you want to eat meat, we'll give you. Take the dead body. Then we, then the uh, the leather can be used also. We're not against the use of leather, but take it from the cow that has died naturally. So these are all uh, revolutionary ideas. Uh, which seem to be uh, not at all possible because we are raised in a society which is uh, extremely unnatural. We don't realize how far away we are from uh, any natural society. The, the Varnashram culture, in the Varnashram culture, everyone will be opulent and no one will have money. Every, or some people may have money, the merchants, the kshatriyas, but otherwise there's no need of money. What do you need money for? You just, as, sarva kama dugha mahi. The earth gives everything. Then what do you need money for? You have, you have space to move in, you have material for housing, 
in every part of the world there's material for housing. Here I guess traditional would be wood. Must be. I would think so in a country which is how much? 70% forest? Sweden? Is it? Anyone? Any Swedes here? Mm, must be. Must be something like 70% forest. So, uh, wood is there or from, from the earth you can make bricks and make uh, or stone you can make. Even those who due to their previous sinful activities are born in such an inhospitable climate as within the Arctic Circle. They make houses out of snow. So nature provides. Uh, what are the, in, in Hindi they said the three necessities of life are roti kapra makan which roughly translates as Food, clothing, and shelter. So shelter comes from the earth. Food obviously comes from the earth. Not obvious for everyone. Not everyone realizes that food comes from the earth. In a book that I recently skimmed through by Dr. Sahadev Das, <laughs> he uh, narrated an anecdote in, well, it was one woman in England, she had uh, towns dweller as a, how much of the population of England? How much of the population of England is engaged in farming? Must be less than 0.5%. Very small population. So the woman had an allotment outside the town. The place where you do, where you grow vegetables. Townspeople, they have little, uh, it's called an allotment. I don't know what, it's some rented, Space for growing vegetables, not next to your house because there's not enough space or people live in apartments. So she went there one day with her young daughter, about five years old, and her daughter's friend also came. So the mother dug up some carrots and held them up and said, just see what nice carrots. And the, the friend of her daughter, five years old, said, my mother doesn't get carrots from the ground. She gets them nice and clean in a in a bag from Tesco. Tesco is the name of a supermarket chain in England, which is now all over Europe. So the young girl was disgusted. Oh, c- carrots from the ground with earth and earth on them. Oh, no idea that comes from the earth. Then uh, food, clothing, clothing also, by the mother nature. Then you, what is that? Cotton, I don't think you, no, cotton definitely don't grow here. But uh, jute you also don't grow here. I say flax, is flax you must get. Then uh, wool you can get. Uh, leather is also one form of clothing. What about hemp? You grow hemp here? That's good for clothing also. I mean, most people use it for other purposes, or prefer to use it for other purposes. Marijuana. But uh, actually, it's very makes very good clothing. So there are all necessities, and, and there must be some other plants. Can you think of any that, that produce... Nettles can be made. They can be made into uh, clothes. Just see. The nasty nettle. It's good for tea and good for eating and good for clothing also. How about that? I learned something today. You're all going to learn something. Huh? You've all come together to learn from each other about farming. Uh, yeah, Srila Prabhupada's program, of course, was not just farms. Farms is an intrinsic inseparable part of the Varnashram mission. So it's, it's, it's not just farms, but it's the whole uh, ethos of Varnashram, which is simple living and high thinking, but in a particular uh, organization, uh, which... It's a t- I would guess it's a very tough one to market in Sweden, of all places. Barnashram, which is the the most uh, uh, 
what's 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 say the word intensely or committedly socialistic country in the world probably isn't it how much tax to does everyone pay must be more than 50% is it you take all your money and then make everyone the same must be tough for business how come volvo and saab didn't emigrate they're still here somehow or other are they owned by the government saab is out where did they go doesn't exist anymore Oh, I learned something else. Yeah, how can you exist in a, in a, with so much taxation? Anyway, the, the whole idea, Srila Prabhupada here in Sweden of all places at Uppsala University chose to speak on the Van Ashram system, first class men, second class men. I mean, even the sound of that to a, to a Swede must be like, Sound like verbal terrorism. <laughs> First class, second class, third class, fourth class. Woo! This is definitely not, uh, not welcome in the country of Olaf Palm. Is that how you pronounce his name? Who, Palme, Palme, who used to go to work on the bus, right? Work means he was the prime minister of the country. Did they ever solve the crime of who killed him? Never find out. Oh, must have been an inside job. That's what they say. If you can't find out, it must be an inside job. So, a Van Ashram. Yeah, this is Srila Prabhupada's mission. 50%, Srila Prabhupada said, 50% of my work is not done. And see what he did do. And then what a big job it is to establish this. But without establishing that extra 50%, then it's very difficult to maintain even the 50% that Srila Prabhupada did establish. Because what happens is people take to Krishna consciousness, but they find it very difficult to maintain Krishna consciousness due to bad association and due to... Uh, uh, being in, yeah, bad association means being in an environment which is not conducive to developing Krishna consciousness. And we have a, a revolutionary creed. Uh, it's not, Krishna consciousness is always revolution in all times and all places because it goes against everything in the material world, whatever, not only at the present time, but at all times. Because the material world goes on on the principle of Krishna unconsciousness, forgetting Krishna, not surrendering to Krishna. So uh, it's always something revolutionary, but to to demonstrate that is, uh, is a major part of preaching. Otherwise, it just seems theoretical. It's we're preaching. Uh, philosophy, but if it can be shown in practice how people can live with their families, especially families, because uh, most people in the world are either married or will be married or should be married, uh, means that they may be living in a state of... Uh, a conjugal relationship without actually being married, because they say, well, what's the point? What's the, what's married? What, what's needed? Marriage is needed as a uh, religious function. In every country of the world, it was, marriage was, uh, even in cultures that were grew up quite separately, marriage was there as a religious function. Otherwise, a man and woman can live together and reproduce, but Cats and dogs do that also. Well, they don't usually stay together after the reproductive act. But many animals and birds do stay together. So marriage is particularly required as a pact between man and woman. Yes, man and woman. Uh, in the eyes of God. 
or as a religious function. So that is required. Most people should be married, with few exceptions. That is uh, required for their being properly situated for making spiritual advancement, which is the ultimate purpose of life. It's actually the only real purpose. So, uh, then how to situate, how to situate everyone. Varnashram is about how to situate everyone in a situation in which their psychophysical propensities are taken care of uh, in a manner that is most conducive for the individual and for the society. That the individual is engaged in a way that is beneficial for the society. And uh, so that in such a situation, everyone uh, can, without being in anxiety about their livelihood or being uh, unhappy with their way of life, they can pursue spiritual life, be directed to pursue that. And we see that most people in the world today, especially in the what Srila Prabhupada with tongue-in-cheek cheek here, refers to the modern, advanced, civilized form of government. Tongue-in-cheek means he's saying it sarcastically. He doesn't... Th- Modern, yes. Advanced, no. Civilized, questionable. So, uh, most people in the modern world, they spend most of their waking hours doing things that they don't want to do. They, they work in some job that they don't like. What a horrible life. And then their pleasure is in their free time, whatever they can, uh, whatever sense gratification they can get. So it's an, it's an unhappy situation. In a situation in which people are unhappy in, in their work, in their activity, then uh, they'll attempt to recompense for their misery by intense sense gratification. That's why we see that uh, people, they, they come out of the uh, out of their work, especially if it's something like in a factory, hellish factory, then they, they like to drink and smoke it is just to get some, get some uh, charge of sensual pleasure. So they're not happy. And in such a situation, how can people even think of uh, developing their consciousness to a higher level? They're uh, simply suffering intensely, both in their work and in their attempt to enjoy the world. Simply suffering. So even materially, if we show the the farm ashram, farm communities, how people can live happily, even materially, uh, people can understand, yes, this is a, a much happier, better way of life. So that is the challenge for our devotees to manifest that. Um, now you've all come for this farm conference, this major part of Srila Prabhupada's movement, which has uh, largely been forgotten. Congratulations to all of you for keeping it alive, but the movement as a whole is not behind it, and actually uh, it can't work unless... The movement as a whole is behind it. It's the Varnashram communities means we need, we need lots of people. We need lots of uh, help from the top. It's from the top, from the middle, from the bottom, from everywhere. It's, it's not at all an easy thing to set up farm communities. It's relatively easy to do farming. That's also... Uh, well, those who know, they know how to do it. I mean, people all over the world have been doing it for centuries, and uh, it didn't used to be that you need to have a, get a university degree to do farming. It would be laughable. Uh, some years ago, I, one, I met one devotee he, from Slovenia. He was in India, and I suppose so I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm studying at university. And 
what, are your, what do your parents do? He said, well, we live on our ancestral farm. Said, and then I asked him, why are you doing, what are you studying in the university for? You can just, when you work on your parents' farm, as has been going on for generations, what do you need to go to university for? He said, well, nowadays, now after we joined the European Union, you're not allowed to do farming unless you have a degree. <laughs> but actually, they probably need it because the way they do farming nowadays with all kinds of pesticides and fertilizers and machines and you have to, you have to measure the, 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 uh, the milk when it's produced, you have to measure not only the quantity but the, what's that called, the, the hygrometer that's for the specific, the fat content has to be measured. It all became very scientific and complicated. So before it was, uh, people could do it very easily. Now they made it very unnecessarily complicated like everything else. But by Krishna's grace, it is still possible to do farming. <laughs> the world didn't change so much. Uh, the land will still produce. The cow uh, eats the grass. And the greatest gift of the cow is the milk. No, according to Srila Prabhupada, the, the most important economic uh, benefit that the cow gives is her stool and urine, which... They fertilize the land. The milk, at least, of course, Srila Prabhupada spoke often about the, the glories of milk. But at least in one conversation, he said that the, uh, the most important product is the stool and urine, which is uh, excellent. Fertilizer. And human stool also, for that matter. Excellent fertilizer, as those of you who have ever directly or indirectly used it, no. I mean, indirectly I know because of uh, in one place I was staying there was a, a leaking septic tank. And, <laughs> and then you get to see everything grows wherever it leaks. <laughs> everything grows fantastic. So it's all Krishna's arrangement. It's not simply by chance. So, anyway, uh, there's a lot of work to do within our movement also to revive the consciousness of, of our farms and varnashram. It's, it's relatively easy to go and work in a job and get some money, and it is pioneering work to plow with the bulls and... Live, oh, I didn't, did I speak about that? Living without money? You, yeah, you don't need money. There's still people in the world who live without money. They still do exist. And they're not all savages in the jungle. This word savage. Actually, in, in Tamil Nadu, in South India, some years ago, the, the government, they, uh, they brought one tribe there are still tribes in India, tribal people, living in the forest. So they took them to the town, they made a town for them and civilized them. And uh, after about three years, the head of the tribe, he said to them, oh, okay, let's go back, let's all go back to the forest. He just saw them becoming so different in a way that he could understand. We were better off as we were, without all this advancement and electricity and schools. He thought we were better off as we were. We lived together very happily and cooperatively and now with all these modern things and there's drunkenness and uh, selfishness. So he was intelligent enough just to take them all back to the jungle and live as savages, uncivilized. <laughs> so there are people in, in still who live uh, and, and a very civilized kind of life also, but even... Uh, we can understand one measure of civilization is that you can go outside your house with no one at home and leave the door wide open. Which in the city you can't imagine doing that. You'd have to be crazy you know, not to put double locks on it and have an alarm system if you've got anything worth stealing at all. But uh, why should that be? That means we expect everyone around us to be criminals. 
But uh, I remember when I, I was about 17 years old, something like that, I was wandering aimlessly in rural Ireland. And you come to a house in the village and door, the front door would be wide open and call, is anyone there? No. No, it's, they know all their neighbors and they're not going to steal from each other. Recently, just a few years ago, I, I, in Tamil Nadu, in one public program in a small, very small town in a rural area, so people had come from all villages around. I said, is it still like that in your village? You can leave, you can go and leave the house wide open or is it? I said, no, no, we, we, we go out, so we, we leave our doors open, we never lock, we don't have locks on our doors. Still, there are places like, still there are places where people live without money. The World Bank hasn't reached them yet to put them in debt. <laughs> You see how the economics and culture, it all goes together. Nowadays, in the previously it was considered very bad to be in debt. Nowadays, it's considered very bad not to be in debt. One of my disciples in America, there was some profile of some report done on him when he went for a job. And so the, from the bank, it report debt. I can't remember the term they gave, but he, he doesn't have any debts, which means he's not a good citizen. The idea you should be in debt. They, they have the idea everyone should be in debt. One devotee told me years ago he was yeah, he, selling paintings here in Sweden. And he met an, an old lawyer. And he said, we have a lot more work to do these days. Because lawyers, in previously we didn't have much work. If there was some uh, some business agreement, people would, that two businessmen would meet, they'd discuss... They'd shake hands, finished. Nowadays you have to have everything in contract, in writing, down to the last detail. Still there are some places in America where maybe not selling a house, you can't even sell a house to it, you have to have a contract for that. But some selling a car or something like that, they'll just do it with a handshake, that's all. No need of any contract, this, that, right? No need of a lawyer. So simple living does foster, it's only, it's only possible if people can live like human beings and eat, more to speak of the spiritual level, even on the material level, people can live with each other, trust each other, trust each other with their children. So children run in one house, run out of another house. Even... Uh, not so long ago in the world, if the, if the children of someone else in the village, if they were misbehaving, someone else would give them a slap. Just to dis And that was considered quite normal. Even now in Sri Lanka, which is another place where many, some people, some place they live without money because they produce everything locally. What do they need money for? So still at school, they have uh, this cane for beating the children. Not that they do it all the time, but if required, they do. And the children, the parents, they they want that. If the boy is misbehaved, you should discipline him. They expect the teachers to do that. So completely different outlook on life. They, they trust that the teacher will not misuse that facility and they will use it honorably. And the teacher is respected. Because now, who cares for a teacher? Just, it's just a, jo it's just a job you do if you can't do anything else. So what, a, what a different uh, outlook, uh, completely different. People can't imagine living. What Srila Prabhupada wanted to give, wanted to give, was the uh, traditional values with the uh, systematic society, Varnashram with the, ultimately the goal of life, not simply living peacefully and happily, but to in a situation where we can not live the life of dogs and hogs, as Srila Prabhupada writes here, but actual human life, which means to sangsidhya uh, haritoshanam, atapumbya dvijasreshta, varnashrama vibhagasha, svanushtitasya dharmasya, sangsidhya haritoshanam, that the Varnashram system should be followed 
for the satisfaction of Bhagavan Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada's farm mission, it is a, this is the revolution. Revolution on all, in all areas. This science needs, modern science needs a good kick up the pants for its, uh, insisting on this evolutionary theory of which there is tremendous evidence that it's completely bogus. So they need a good, good kick up the pants also. Uh, that's one revolution. Uh, so in, in various ways, the whole society needs to be turned around, upside down, inside out. But this... Uh, practical scheme that Srila Prabhupada has based on the knowledge that if Krishna is satisfied then only we can be happy. Based on this knowledge, based on Krishna's instructions to organize people to live simply protecting the cows and worshipping Krishna and dividing society uh, as required, into four orders. So, really the Srila Prabhupada's farms are a, definitely farming is there, but it's a lot more than just farms. Even to establish farms is quite an endeavor. M much of the land in Europe, I would imagine, that was previously farmed is not farmed at all. It's definitely like that in England, there you'll see signs, a few signs here and there, get England farming again. And they don't, the land is just, just not farmed. So even to get farming is, is quite a revolution in itself, but Srila Prabhupada's farm projects are a lot, lot more than farming. It's a social revolution and a spiritual revolution and a very peaceful revolution. And it has all the answers to all the ecological problems, social problems, individual psychological problems, political problems, philosophical problems, all kinds of everything solved. Live simply, chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my time's up, unless anyone has any question or comment. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but... Only the choir came. We have to get out to the non-choir members. <laughs> yes? Farming is a very important part of our society. Well, 50% Prabhupada said Varnashram. Uh, the movement isn't behind it. That's what I said, that you could say that's subjective. Uh, what do all of you think? Mm. How do we get them behind it? Well, we have to preach, isn't it? We have to preach and at the same time do it as best we can. I'm with you. I, uh, well, some of my disciples and others, after years of me talking about it, they actually started some farm projects in India. So, I talk. <laughs> That's my job. But others are doing that. Uh, so it really requires, it, 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 first, what is that? Thinking, feeling, willing. So first of all, you have to put the idea in people's heads and go on talking about it and tell them about it. Preaching. The whole Krishna Conscious Movement came about by Srila Prabhupada's movement and it can be sustained and expanded by preaching. So you have to tell devotees and then we have to uh, support that also. I, 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 this year I spent several months living on those projects. I mean, just being there without going away. So that's one kind of moral support also living simply. 
peace with them. So we have to preach about it and we have to do it. And uh, gradually it can pick up. Preach the devotees to, to individuals that, okay, what are you doing? Why don't you come and join us? Make some facility. It is difficult because, because the society is not behind it. We have to get individual grihastas to invest their money, which many of them don't have any money. But those who have to, to purchase land and to, to start projects like that. We do have tremendous, uh, faci- just like facilities, just like here. How, how much land is here? More than a hundred hectares, yeah. And in New Mayapur, we have land also. In uh, Simhachalam, in Germany, we have land. At Villa Vrindavan, so that we already have projects I mean, possi- the, the possibility is there to revive so that's in America we have so many good farms but we have to get devotees into it and yeah we need the whole movement behind it otherwise it's going to be very difficult to get it going but that requires a uh, Shift of consciousness. Hungary also, of course. I think that's probably the one farm in Europe which is, uh, I mean, that's, that's a real community which is working. It's a long way from self-sufficiency. That's something to work toward. Um, can be done. I mean, for for thousands of years, people have lived with all their necessities from the land, right? So why not now? One reason may be because we have so many unnecessities which we think are necessities. And then you get in a, then you get caught in a spiral that, well, okay, I need electricity, I need a cell phone, I need a TV, whoop, not a TV, no TVs. Ah, uh, we need all these things, okay, but we're only fine, so we have to farm some more. That means we have to work some more, and maybe put in a little fertilizer, which we have to take, a, I don't know, maybe need a tractor so we can produce, and then you get caught in a whole spiral of, of non-simplicity. I'm sure there are many things could be said, but I think I should leave it as you all have to start your conference at 10 o'clock. So I will finish here. Hare Krishna. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. On whose order I'm also writing some books and some of them are available there if anyone would like to purchase them. Including one book, Glimpses of Traditional Indian Life, which is dedicated to those devotees who have followed Srila Prabhupada's instructions to live on the land. So that is supposed to give some idea of, at least in India, how people have lived simply following the original culture, to give some idea of how we should start to do that all over the world. Hare Krishna.